This is Jeopardy! I'll try bestsellers for 800, please. Pat Hackett has edited and published the diaries this artist kept from 1976 to 87. John. Who's Andy Warhol? Right again. One of the hottest books out these days is a diary that late Andy Warhol kept for over a decade. He initially started the journal to keep track of his personal expenses for the IRS, but it became a notepad for his observations of the rich and the famous. The diaries were edited by Pat Hackett, a freelance writer who also collaborated with Andy Warhol on two other books he wrote and his film, Bad. Hello, Pat. Hi, Cindy. Yes, welcome to our show. Tell me, did uh, Andy ever dream that your daily conversations would end up in a book? Yeah, that was the whole uh, idea of doing them. Uh, he always referred to uh, their being published after he was gone, uh, but of course we didn't know that he would uh, die so soon, so it seemed like a very distant time, but it turned out to be uh, now, actually. Well, tell me the process. Did he actually call you every morning and say, my gosh, Pat, you know, last night I was here or there with whatever, and tell you his doings? Yeah, or I would call him, who, uh, whoever got to it first, or usually around 9 o'clock, and we'd watch a little TV together, uh, either the news shows or uh, I Love Lucy, and then he'd, uh, he'd just begin at the beginning of his day. Or if something very exciting had happened, uh, he'd get right to that first and then go back and... Uh, just do it chronologically and do the afternoon. But it was, uh, it was generally a very organized uh, unrolling of the day before because he was a very big collector and this was his way of collecting his life. He, would, uh, he just considered it cataloged after he talked about it and that enabled him to get on with the next day. Sort of. I see. <laughs> so the, the story that's out that this was done for IRS purposes is not necessarily true. Oh yeah, it was because every cab ride, uh, the, at the end of every en of every entry or uh, at the end of every party, he'd say, "Cab dropped off so and so, three fifty <laughs> or four dollars." It was all uh, it was all uh, tied into that. Um, but then it became much. Uh, Yes. Much more than that. It was a dual purpose, really. Well, I, I read the book last night a little bit. It's, it's a, quite a book, so I couldn't get through a, a lot yeah, of it. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but what I did notice that he's very candid. I mean, you use the word trashed. Uh, some people that I always thought he was very friendly with, for instance, um, Liza. He did party very, very much with Liza, yet he wasn't always very kind to her. Well, I don't know about that. I, I think that... He really, he really liked Liza a lot, and I think it's a matter of, uh, with all of our friends, we have, uh, it doesn't mean we, uh, we don't notice their faults. He just, he thought she was really fun and very talented and very smart. He had a good time with her. I would not say that he trashed uh, her at all. I think he had a great appreciation for her, and also he loved her mother, Judy Garland. It doesn't mean that you don't notice the things that they're doing, that you don't... Uh, turn a blind eye to it, but he did not consider that trashing her. He just considered it telling what had happened the night before. I see, and he also spoke very candidly about Halston, his friend Halston. Yeah, he did. Uh, Halston was somebody that was very, very generous and had all these people at his house all the time, and Andy always gave credit to the people who were the big hosts and hostesses, because they're the ones that really create an era. And uh, uh, with Halston, Halston actually sort of scared Andy because he could be there. He sort of ran his whole house and would determine who would get to go places and who wouldn't. But Andy, um, he 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 liked Halston. He he was sort of fascinated. Did he with feel Halston. that Halston kind of uh, sold out and was did that scare Andy? Sold out. I think it was just. Uh, I wouldn't say that he he did sell out, but it was a, a very kind of tragic business decision, I guess you would say, because uh, uh, it didn't work out well financially for him uh, in proportion to what his talent and his influence in the marketplace in the 70s uh, would have led you to believe he would be able to do with his name. So it seems, uh, yeah. you know, it was before the conglomerate take 
takeovers and when you sell yourself to one person and then another one buys you and another one buys you, you lose control and I think that's what yeah. happened to Halston and Andy wanted to make sure it never happened to him. He said, I want to talk to him and sit down to him personally and see where he made his mistake. Yes, well, he seemed to care. He, there, another prominent figure, uh, Pat, was, uh, Mick, was Bianca Jagger. Yeah, well, Bianca was very glamorous, I think, um, and very, uh, I think a lot of, uh, I, I noticed that a lot of people also think that Andy was hard on Bianca, but uh, really, I think when you read the whole diaries, uh, certainly a lot of the uh, foolish things that happened in the 70s uh, mm -hmm. uh, are depicted in detail, and I think that that's what makes a lot of people in the diaries uncomfortable. But he seemed, Pat, he seemed to know so much. He seemed to know about their affairs, Mick and Bianca and, and other people. Was he really there? Was this all firsthand, or was it a lot of gossip that he heard? How involved was he in all these lives? Well, uh, he was quite involved, and in, in each case it, it varied. You know, you're not there for every moment, but the people call you the next day, and they tell you what this one said, and then the other, uh, the other parties call and tell you their version. It's, uh, it's a combination of things, and uh, uh, it varies with each, with each instance. Uh, these were things that you would be reading about in the gossip columns of, of the newspapers, and... Uh, uh, and magazines, but and this is just uh, this is another uh, another viewpoint on it. This is the viewpoint of someone who was uh, closer to what was going on, and so people. Uh, how are Pat? How are people taking this book that have read it? How are the people that are taking it that are in the book? Well, you know, it's very soon because it was just in the bookstores on Friday, and I think they had two weeks to react to the People magazine excerpt, which is very. Uh, it's not. It was not representative of the whole pictures uh, of yeah. them that are uh, given in the diary. So I am not so concerned when people say, oh, how could you do, do this when they've read the People magazine articles? Because when you read the entire diaries, you see the affection that Andy had for all of these people. And uh, uh, so I'm actually waiting until people read the entire book, yes. which as you mentioned is Well, we'll be wrong. interested to, to hear the reaction. He was a very unique individual, to say the least, and uh, I'm sorry you lost such a dear friend. Uh, maybe we'll get you back on the show after we do hear some more reactions, and thank you very much, and we'll be right back with more right after this short break. Here's this week's excerpt from the Andy Griffith Diaries. Saw Goober at Studio 54. He doesn't look well. 